A woman has been beheaded on the streets outside of San Francisco, California, in broad daylight of witnesses. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Uncivil Law, where we learn through the misfortunes of others. As always, I hope you enjoy this legal education content, and today will be the day I earn that subscription. Yes, it seems that the crime is truly out of control, and that general allowance of crime in the San Francisco and California areas have ultimately manifested in a woman being beheaded on a San Carlos street in the Bay Area in front of witnesses during the day. But it just does get that little bit worse as we're going to find out from the article. Uh, pictured, by the way, in this shot, you can see a firefighter using a fire hose to clean off the street of all the blood that was left behind of the woman who had been beheaded. So that's what's going on in this picture. So that's interesting. Let's read a little bit about the article. Citing unnamed law enforcement sources, ABC7, a news outlet, has reported that the woman was beheaded by a man that she had gotten a temporary restraining order against. So a couple notes of legal education. Of course, a temporary restraining order is issued by a court and violation of that can yield to some sort of sanction. It can yield to arrest, it can yield to prosecution, but it does not require the police to do anything. So just because you have a restraining order doesn't mean the police have obligations to protect you. In fact, we've learned that very, very clearly from cases like Warren versus DC or Deshawnee versus Winnebago, or perhaps most on point, Castle Rock versus Gonzalez. In the case of Castle Rock versus Gonzalez, which went to the United States Supreme Court, a woman had a restraining order, which the police did not enforce, which ultimately led to the death of several of her children. And the Supreme Court ruled, well, too bad, so sad, you can't sue the police. So perhaps unsurprisingly, in San Francisco, the police have not responded in time, and there's absolutely nothing from a legal standpoint that she can do about it against the police. One, because she's dead, and even if she wasn't, because she has no cause of action, because the restraining order is only as good as the law enforcement officer who's willing to enforce it, which, you know, depends on which law enforcement officer you get that day. And in a place like California, which is soft on crime, probably not going to go that great. The San Mateos County Sheriff's Office has provided a person to speak on their behalf, Lieutenant Allen. Lieutenant Allen has declined to confirm the account, but told the Chronicle that witnesses report the assault in progress at 1150 in the morning. So broad daylight, middle of the day at Laurel Street and Magnolia Avenue, where they found an obviously deceased adult female. I guess they, I guess even these police officers were able to determine obviously deceased. As you know, her head was no longer attached to her body. Police say the incident happened in a street in front of the home of the victim who lived there with two children. The police officer spokesman has tried to comfort us by saying that they don't believe that children were present at the time of the attack, but there were other witnesses there at the time, and so who knows who might have observed this. Police officer spokesman, drawing just the most brilliant detective work conclusions, says a stabbing instrument was used. That's, that's, that's helpful. Yes, probably some sort of stabbing slashing instrument was used in the beheading. One would imagine some sort of large knife or machete, probably, if you had to take a guess, but yeah, that's probably what was going on. Deputies arrived within minutes of the call, so as always, the police are minutes away when seconds count, and it's certainly a good thing that San Francisco and California make it so hard for women to get a concealed firearm so she was utterly unable to protect herself. Shortly thereafter, the suspect returned to the scene of the crime and was detained. A witness has told the Chronicle the suspect began yelling and vomiting as the police placed him in custody. I wonder if he gets bail or not. In San Francisco, who can tell these days? On Thursday night, as firefighters hosed the street where the woman was killed, as we saw in the, in the image earlier, we saw that happening. A neighbor said that he was moving items from inside his home into a storage container on his front lawn when the attack occurred. It must have happened so fast, the man said as he was watching the street being cleaned, as, the, as San Francisco has finally found motivation to clean its streets. Apparently all it takes is being beheaded. So that's, that's the new trick to actually get the streets clean. 
Get your streets clean. San Francisco hates this one stupid trick. I was quiet when I went inside, but by the time I came up with more items, there were police all over. It happened fast with a woman unable to protect herself who had a restraining order, which did her absolutely no good. The eyewitness said he saw the victim on the ground, her legs poking out from behind her black Volkswagen Jetta. Then he said, the suspect returned to the scene and yelled and vomited as police arrested him. His own car was parked right behind the victim's car and was cornered off by police tape. While the police tape is there to save the day, I know we all feel better. San Mateo Sheriff's Office deputies, forensic investigators, and Redwood City firefighters remained at the cornered off area of the apartment complex Thursday evening. Earlier in the day, the police spokesperson said that authorities were still looking for the weapon, so not so sure where the murder weapon is because I guess it's San Francisco and you know they can't tell what a murder weapon is from all the other rubbish that's just left around. The suspect was arrested on suspicion of homicide. That's a pretty good suspicion. And this police spokesman added that the, that the suspect was known to the victim, that would be the restraining order, and the victim was believed to be isolated. Well, I think that much is clear. The, that the woman was isolated, I think is manifestly clear. Isolated in life, isolated from being able to protect herself, isolated in death, forgotten and abandoned by her own government. The police spokesman said that they were securing search warrants for her home and the man's home. The deputies who first arrived were beset by the scene, said the, per said the police spokesman, and that responding authorities and witnesses have been connected to counseling services. So yeah, a pretty gruesome scene. And then we got the firefighters to help clean it up so that we get those traces off the street. The police spokesman said the office was not releasing any identifying details about the victim pending notification. And the San Mateo coroner's office has also declined to comment, although I would imagine that would be a pretty easy autopsy. Cause of death. Yeah, I think we got that one covered. I suppose it's not any surprise that this is happening in San Francisco, California. I think the reason that this is happening is because people are becoming more and more emboldened. As more and more crime is allowed to occur and allowed to go without being punished, people are feeling more and more invulnerable from governmental action. I don't think that this happens overnight. I think this happens because in places like San Francisco, California, people understand that the prosecutors are less likely to convict and less likely to prosecute in the first place. They see crime happening and going unpunished and people feel more and more emboldened. And I have absolutely no particular confidence that San Francisco will be able to prosecute this crime or won't give them some sort of sweetheart deal. So I suppose we'll see more firemen with more fire hoses cleaning off the streets. Maybe then San Francisco will finally get some clean streets, if that's what it takes, I suppose, I, I guess. But man, it seems like there's easier ways. And maybe we should allow people the means to defend themselves so the woman who has a restraining order actually has the mechanisms to back it up when the police won't do so. So at least for the moment, that brings us to the end of the discussion of this story.